Introduction to JavaScript. Well, it's been a good run here. We've had a good time playing with this town, this simple town with their simple games. But it's about time to move on. Somewhere a little bit more complicated, somewhere bigger. Vegas sounds about right. But before you do that, you don't want to leave these folks stranded. No, you want to give them a way to calculate the winner, even if you're not there. To do that, we'll combine return values from a function with a new variation on the if statement. Right now, we've got our function roll dice, which calculates the score of the player. However, right now, what happens in roll dice stays in roll dice. We're going to go ahead and fix that. First, we're going to provide a return value. So we're going to return the total score. Then, we'll set up a variable on each of these calls in order to catch that return value. Now, we'll have to see which one is bigger. To do that, we'll be using the less than and the greater than symbols. These work just like the double equals, in that they're comparing the size of two numbers. For example, 3 less than 4, that's true. So it's going to return us some true. 3 bigger than 4, that'll be false. So, our if statement is going to test whether one of our totals is bigger than the other. And if so, we're going to print out that that person wins. But what's going to happen if my total is bigger? We're going to need another if statement to check that case. And then, we're going to need a third case in order to check what happens when they're equal. So we'll go ahead and run that and make sure it works. Play dice. And seems to be working. This is great. Now, this works, but it's not the best way of doing it. If you look at this, it looks like we're testing three different things. But really what we're doing is we're testing which one of our scores is bigger. So we're going to use a construct called an if-else statement that helps us see that in the code. Essentially, the situation that we have right here is that all three of these conditions are mutually exclusive, but the computer doesn't know that, and the person reading this for the first time won't know that. So the person and the computer, it'll evaluate this if statement, and even if it's true, x is greater than y, and it doesn't need to do any of these others, it'll still evaluate these statements trying to see if they're true or not. So we want to fix that. We're going to put an else statement, which tells the computer to only look at this if the previous statement was false. So now, if x is greater than y, the computer won't bother checking whether y is greater than x because we've told it that those are mutually exclusive. And, for this last part, since if x is not greater than y, and y is not greater than x, they have to be equal, we'll use a simple else statement with no attached if statements. Here's the code in the REPL. Not only is it shorter, but it's more obviously doing one thing instead of three separate things. And that's very helpful for people 
that want to read that. And we see that when we play dice, it still works. Sometimes the else statement makes it so that things are not only easier to read, but easier to implement. That will be the case for your homework assignment. What I want you to do is go to this REPL and make a condition so that if any player's total is equal to 7, they win automatically and they don't look at the other choices. You'll be using your if-else statements. Good luck, and I'll see you next time in Vegas.